White Sox starting pitcher Lucas Giolito is going to be traded, but will it be to the Dodgers? It's possible. That's coming up next on Dodgers Dugout. What's going on, Dodgers Nation? Doug McCain here. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. If you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe to the Dodgers Nation YouTube channel for all latest Dodgers news and rumors all season long. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. And if you really want to support the channel and you want to see us post even more Dodgers content, smash that like button. And as always, I want your takes down below in the comment section. Today's Dodgers Nation question of the day. Do you want to see the Dodgers trade for Lucas Giolito? On a scale of 1 to 10, how badly do you want him in Dodger Blue? Let me know down below. And for all latest Dodgers news, head over to DodgersNation.com. So today we're continuing our series on Dodgers trade targets where we're taking a look at the top names that are going to be available at the MLB trade deadline. And I've already identified starting pitching as the Dodgers top need. Yes, they need a reliever, possibly two. Yes, you could use a right-handed bat. But right now, I think if you really want to solidify this rotation and give yourself some protection in the event that some of these other guys go down or some of these rookies, you can't count on them later in the year. You need to go out there and get a starting pitch that you can trust. And if you look at the Dodgers pitching heading into the All-Star break, they have a 4.55 ERA. That's 11th in Major League Baseball. If you look at their FIP, it's at 4.38. That's good for 17th. The 4.27 expected FIP, that's good for 18th. But the number that really concerns me, the biggest red flag, sound the alarms, is the innings pitched by the starters. Currently heading into the break, the Dodgers starters have gone 445 innings this season. So 445 innings pitched, that's good for 23rd out of 30 teams. That is not going to get it done. You are going to tax your bullpen. You need more length out of your starters. And Lucas Giolito is a guy that can provide just that. But the first question is, will Lucas Giolito be made available? Will the White Sox finally accept they're not going to contend with that current group and they need to sell off some pieces? Well, USA Today's MLB insider, my friend, Mr. Bob Nightingale, he says the White Sox are most likely going to trade Giolito. He wrote recently, the White Sox don't plan to keep starting Lucas Giolito after the season and will make him available at the trade deadline if they are out of the race. So are the White Sox out of the race? Well, if you take a look at the standings, the Sox are currently sitting in fourth place in the AL Central at 38-53, and 53, eight games back in the division, and that is one of the weaker divisions in the sport. You're talking about a division where the first place team, the Guardians, are sitting at 45-44. and 44. So I think it's finally time for the White Sox owner Jerry Reinsdorf to accept the fact they won't be contenders. To take a long look in the mirror, look, he made the decision to bring in Tony La Russa. It just has not worked out in Chicago, and it's time to trade for some pieces. And then MLB.com's insider Mark Fine said he wrote, Giolito has pitched to a 3-1-4 ERA in nine starts since the beginning of May, including a 1-5 ERA in his first three June outings, but the White Sox came into the Week 11 games under 500. They will have some difficult decisions to make. For instance, do they trade controllable arms such as Dylan Cease and or Michael Kopech? Giolito will be a free agent at the end of the season, making it a near certainty that he will be wearing a new uniform by August. So there you have it. He is most likely going to be traded, and what you need to know is that it's going to be a rental. He is going to be a free agent after the season. He doesn't have any team control. You saw that name that was mentioned by Fine Sand, Dylan Cease. Dylan Cease, that's an ace. That's a guy that, yes, he's had a little bit of a down year, but he he has a stuff. That guy is under team control for multiple seasons. The prospect capital to bring in someone like Cease is going to be very expensive. But for someone like Lucas Giolito, you're not going to have to include your top shelf prospects. You won't have to give up a Diego Cartaya or a Bobby Miller. Now, would you include a Michael Bush, their number three prospect? I think that would depend on if the Dodgers are interested in getting a package deal and getting some of their relievers included in the deal. Maybe you go for a Keenan Middleton, a guy who's been a breakout player for the White Sox or a Kendall Graveman, one of those relievers. We talked about Liam Hendricks. Well, he hasn't pitched in a while. He won't be back until the middle of July, and they don't know how he looks. Now, if he looks good when he returns and you're not afraid of him getting injured after the trade, maybe you go that route, especially when you consider the fact that they've lost Daniel Hudson for a significant amount of time, and I don't think you want to rely on him returning because he does come back. Then you fear maybe another injury will occur. So that's definitely a possibility. And then, of course, there's old friend Joe Kelly, and I 
I know a lot of you guys want to see JK17 back in Dodger blue. And if you look at his numbers this season, the ERA, it doesn't blow your mind at 482, but the FIP at 322 and the K percentage at 30.8%. He could certainly help this Dodgers bullpen. And, of course, you got Tim Anderson. Now, Tim Anderson, we've talked a lot about him on this show. And Tim Anderson is a guy that, yes, he is having a down year. Yes, he's really struggled. If you look at his numbers, he's hitting 227 with a 46 weighted runs created plus. But he's a guy that maybe could change things up, have a change of scenery, and get his career back on track. And we know during the World Baseball Classic, he became really good friends with Mookie Betts. And if you're the Dodgers, you say, hey, this is a guy who has had a lot of success as a hitter. Last season, he had 301. The season before that, 309. Before that, 322. Before that, 335. And you drop that all the way down to 227. Something just isn't right. So maybe a change of scenery could help him. And if you don't believe in Miguel Vargas at second, maybe you throw Tim Anderson at second and you got Miguel Rojas at shortstop or if you fear that Miguel Rojas could possibly have an injury because of his age because he's been banged up so I wouldn't completely rule that out as well if the White Sox are selling pieces you could say hey give us buy one get one free give us buy one get one half off I mean that's definitely in the cards we've seen this Dodgers team make blockbuster deals in the past you thought they were going to get Max Scherzer you threw in Trey Turner you gave your top two prospects so I would not rule that out but Giolito would be the centerpiece piece of the trade. He would be the headliner and we're going to talk about his numbers and how good of a pitcher he is and some of his pros and cons. But first, I think you have to include the fact that he is a Southern California native. He did grow up a Dodger fan. I don't know if you saw back in mid-June when the Dodgers hosted the White Sox. He made no secret about it. He talked about how special it was to be in that stadium and pitching at Dodger Stadium and how much he looked up to guys like Clayton Kershaw when he was growing up. And if you look at his history, he was born at Providence City. St. Joseph Medical Center in Burbank, California. He grew up in Santa Monica, California. He began playing t-ball at the age of five. He then went on to Harvard, Westlake, and Studio City. There you had one of the best rotations in high school baseball with guys like Jack Flaherty and Max Freed. You had Lucas Giolito. Ethan Katz was the pitching coach. And then he was committed to play for UCLA. He was going to be a Bruin. And then ultimately, he entered the 2012 MLB draft. He was selected by the Washington Nationals with the 16th pick in in the first round. There was a lot of talk that he was going to be the first overall pick that season. But jump to this season where he's currently at in his career. I wouldn't say he's an ace. He's not an ace, but he does have nights where he pitches like a king. Now, if you look at his numbers so far this season, he has a 3-5 ERA, a 4-1-3 expected ERA, a 4-1-6 fifth, a 4-23 expected fifth. And if you look at his strikeout numbers, he's striking out over a quarter of the batters that he's faced this season at 25.6%. The walk rate, that's above average at 7.1%. Opponents are hitting 229 off him this season. That's down from 270 last year. A 117 whips. This is a guy that's absolutely a top 30 starter in baseball, but there are some games where he looks like he's a top 10 guy. So that is what you get with Lucas Giolito. There are certain nights where he goes off and he has a big night. We're talking seven, eight innings with double digit strikeouts. And the pros and cons of Giolito, the first pro is, and for me, what I'm looking for mostly when it comes to these starting pitchers is that he posts, he pitches. You can count on him to give you quality innings. Right now, 18 starts and 105 and a thirds innings pitch. That's 19th in Major League Baseball. The other pro, above average strikeout rate like we just talked about. Now, the strikeout rate isn't anywhere near it was when he peaked at 33.7% in 2020, but he's still striking out, like I said, over a quarter of the hitters that he's faced at 25.1%. He's in the 65th percentile in strikeout rate, and really the big adjustment for him has been going with more slider. He's increased the use of his slide piece. Last year, he threw it 23.6% of the time this year he's going with it 30.9 percent of the time that's also been an adjustment that he's made during the season so his numbers would have looked even better had he been going with an increased slider for the entire year and two another pro above average command 7.1 walk percentage he's in the 66 percentile in that department now if you look at the cons 
Like we said earlier, he gives up dingers, 1.37 home runs per nine. That's the 18th highest in Major League Baseball. So he has been homer prone this year and at stretches throughout his career. And the biggest con for me that I look at is those expected numbers. I mean, if you look at the expected FIP at 423, the expected ERA at 413, if you look at his BABIP at 277, there are some numbers that point to some regression to the mean. And yeah, I think he's a guy that can be a solid number number three, possibly a number two, but he's not going to be a guy that's a surefire ace. But like I said, do they really need an ace? I mean, you look at this offense that the Dodgers have, they just need a guy that you can depend upon. So he's not your game one starter, but he's absolutely a guy you can trust in games two or three, a guy who's absolutely a number two or three starter in this league. I think two might be a little high, but for sure a number three starter. And if you're looking for another con is that, yeah, he doesn't do too many things great. If you look at his MLB percentile rankings, 41st percentile percentile average exit velocity 31st percentile and hard hit percentage 24th percentile and barrel percentage 33 percentile in chase rate does have an elite extension is above average in whip percentage walk percentage and k percentage but when it comes to limiting hard contact that's not really what he excels at also if you look at the fastball spin in the 23rd percentile and that is something i can tell you from talking to people within this organization that's something they really covet is the fastball spin so like I said, Lucas Giolito makes a ton of sense. If you don't have to give up an ace package to get him, then I think you do it. And also, I think if you make a deal with the White Sox, it's a multiplayer deal. Like I said, it's Lucas Giolito plus a reliever, maybe a Tim Anderson, and you're getting three players back. If that's the case, then yeah, you are going to have to give them a bigger package. But as long as you don't include guys like Diego Cartaya and Bobby Miller, maybe you give up one of the starting pitchers, one of the young guns, the Nick Nostrini types, a Landon Nag type, I'm okay okay with that but I think that this team they need a surplus of pitching it's not just starting pitching I think Lucas Giolito is a guy that he's going to want to take his game to a whole nother level just imagine him putting on that Dodgers uniform for the first time there will be tears in his eyes and I think you're going to get the best out of him because two he is going to be a free agent after this season. So one, he's going to want to help his hometown team. It's going to be a dream come true pitching at Dodger Stadium. And then two, he's going to want to get a bag. He's going to want to sign himself a nice contract. And I think that he will be incentivized to ball out with this Dodgers team. So yeah, I definitely think Lucas Giolito makes a ton of sense. And unless you're going to go big game hunting for a Dylan Cease or a Corbin Burns if he becomes available or some of his other guys that have more team control, Giolito could be a very sensible trade for the Dodgers. If I had to rank it on a scale of 1 to 10 Dodger hats as far as how much I want him in Dodger blue, I'll give that a 7.5. 7 and a half Dodger hats for Lucas Giolito. But let me know down below in the comments section on a scale of 1 to 10 Dodgers hats, how much do you want to see him in Dodger blue? What are your thoughts on him as a pitcher? Let me know down below. My name is Doug McCain. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. For all things Dodger baseball all season long, all latest MLB trade rumors and news, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell and if you really want to support the channel smash that like button it really helps out the channel and helps us post even more dodgers content and until next time think blue bleed blue and i'm out